One of the questions that has vexed the church for all, pretty much all of Christian history has been, can a person lose their salvation? Or some people will put it, can a person give their salvation up? We're told in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. Uh, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So your salvation has nothing to do with your works, but is based on the grace of God and the mechanism that activates that grace, the means by which we appropriate that salvation to ourselves is through our faith. So to truly have faith, the kind of faith that God calls us to, to truly have faith, true faith, is that we are going all in. We're all in. We're not just kind of covering our bases. We're not just taking a part of ourselves and, oh, let's just give this Christianity thing a shot. Ah, let's see if this is okay. Let's just check this out. That is not faith. Faith is being all in, all in. You believe in your heart, your very core, that God raised Jesus from the dead. That's the fundamental good news of Christianity, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you gotta believe it in your heart, and then you gotta proclaim it. You gotta proclaim it with your mouth, confess it with your mouth. Confession isn't just, I'm sorry for my sins. Confession in that context is basically, is, is a proclamation. You're declaring. You're declaring your faith. So when you declare your allegiance, your faith with Jesus, I'm in, I'm on team Jesus, I'm with Jesus. Jesus, I give my life to Jesus. That's a confession, a real confession. Uh, when you believe with all your heart that Jesus is who he says he is, that God did indeed raise him from the dead, that he died for my sins, that's the kind of faith that is a saving faith. Now, yes, of course, I've, I've had the discussion with this with some church members and discussion with this with others, other pastors too. Yes, it's true that a child or a, an adult that's grown up and has not been part of the church um, is not going to understand all the theological ins and outs. And a person new to faith is going to have lots of questions. That's fine. I'm not saying you've got to be a theologian to get saved. The thief on the cross, uh, you know, was not a theologian. He didn't have all the answers. He didn't have it all figured out. It's, it seems by his question, Lord, when you enter into your, his request rather, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me, it seems by that request that he didn't really have any idea what the kingdom of God was really all about. Um, you know, he wasn't asking really the, the, the thief to even save him per se. He was asking the thief, he was, excuse me, he was not asking Jesus to save him per se. He was asking Jesus simply to remember him. But here's what we do see in, in, in the thief's request. Listen to me. You look, look at the thief's words and look at what the thief on the cross was saying. You see humility, humility, no entitlement whatsoever. He had no sense of entitlement. He knew that he deserved, he deserved death. He didn't have it, he wasn't entitled to anything. No entitlement, entitlement gone, okay, no entitlement. He deserved death. He was humbly, simply asking just to be remembered. That's it. But he also addressed Jesus as Lord. So he recognized who Jesus was, he recognized who he was, and he did so in the context of humility. And so that, Jesus saved him. Uh, so, um, so bottom line is, um, God is the determiner of what is true and, and, and not true faith, okay? So this leads, let, this brings us back around, now that we understand what salvation essentially is. This brings us back around to our question, can a person lose his or her salvation? Because often this question stems from, uh, you know, we know people who for many years went to church, they, they, they said the right thing, they sang the right songs, maybe they sang the certain song beautifully. Now all of a sudden they're not living for the Lord, they're not, they're not in church anymore. In many cases they don't even say, they say they don't even believe in God anymore. And so it seems logical to us that that person was once a Christian and now is not a Christian. But I want you to think about this for a second. Who is it Who is it that dispenses grace? Who gives grace? Who therefore is the one that does the saving work? Not you, not me, not the church. Now there's a misunderstanding of, of Matthew chapter 16 where Jesus calls Peter and refers to Peter as the rock and all that. There's a misunderstanding of that, that Jesus gives Peter the keys to heaven and therefore the church has the keys and therefore the church dispenses grace and therefore the church decides who gets to heaven and who doesn't. That is a misquoting 
and a misunderstanding of that entire passage, okay? Jesus is the door, not the church, not the church, not me. Think about that for a second, not you. We do not know, we do not know the, in, the heart and the intent of other people. We think we do, but you cannot probe deeply into someone else's heart and know whether they're sincere and know all the ins and outs of that person's heart and that person's core, you, beliefs and actions and so forth. You don't know the heart of another person. You may catch glimpses of it. You may have greater knowledge of one person's heart than another person's heart. For example, I think I know my wife's heart fairly well, but I do not know my wife's heart as well as God knows her heart. And the same thing is true as far as her knowing my heart or even my kid's heart. My wife and I, we know our kids pretty well. We don't know them as well as God does. So think about it. It is not human beings that dispense grace. God dispenses grace. God is the one that does the saving, okay? Therefore, God is the one who ultimately is in the position to know who is sincere and who's not sincere, and who's in the kingdom of God and who's not in the kingdom of God. God knows that. You and I don't know that. You, you, we don't. We operate on faith. We operate on, well, it seems like this person accepted Jesus. It seems like this person was a Christian, but you don't know. So how is it that we can, how is it that we can determine, well, this person was saved for many years, then they renounced their salvation, now they're not saved. How in the world can we even say that? How can we even say that about people? Because we're not the ones that saved them. We're not the ones that knew whether they were saved or not saved. Think about it. You're you're casting a judgment in an area that you have no clue about. All you know is what you see. But we're told over in the word of God that man looks on the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. God knows. He knows everything. He knows whether a person was sincere or not when that person confessed Jesus Christ. I've had the privilege of leading people to Jesus. I've had the privilege of leading people to Christ. But even as I say those words to you, only God knows whether or not the people who I prayed with actually accepted Jesus or not. Only God knows. Um, I don't. I, I, I have to just give people the benefit of the doubt, and I have to just assume based on what I'm observing, that, yeah, that person seems to be sincere, and I, and I roll with that. Um, when I do funerals, if the, if the family tells me that the person I'm officiating, or if, especially if I knew the person, if there's any outward evidence that the person accepted Jesus, I'm going to roll with that, and I'm going to preach a positive funeral and preach as if that person's in heaven. And I will continue to do that because it's not my job to, to, to make a determination. Well, that person's not in heaven. They didn't, you know, that's not my, that's above my pay grade, you know? So I'm going to, I'm going to go with what I can see and I'm going to, I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to take the most positive, um, you know, understanding as I can away from it, but, and, and, and preach accordingly. Um, but ultimately when it, in any funeral that I preach and any, Anytime I'm standing in a pulpit here at Only Baptist Church, I know. Only God knows whether someone is saved or not saved. Only God knows. And therefore, it's above my pay grade to even get into uh, this person's saved, this person's not saved, this person lost their salvation. This per I, I, I can't even go there. And you can't either. You can't either. Only God knows that stuff, okay? And here's another thing to even drive it home even more. When it comes to the issue of time, you see, we look at people in linear time, you know, like, uh, you know, this person accepted, like, well, let's use myself as an example. I accepted Jesus as my savior in the early 80s. March 13th, 1981 is when I looked to, is when I made my public prayer and then later, later got baptized and so forth. All right, so let's just take me as an example. So March 13th, I was born 1969 and just had my 51st birthday, physical birthday. Then I uh, got saved, accepted Jesus Christ as my savior on March 13th, 1981. Okay, um, let's say, hypothetically, it's, I don't foresee this happening, but let's say 2022, uh, I renounce my faith and I, I decided I don't wanna be a pastor anymore and I wanna be a motorcycle gang leader. Can you picture that? Anyway, uh, not that all motorcycle gangs are bad. I'm just, I'm just trying to be funny with this example. But anyway, um, so let's say um, there are some Christian motorcycle gangs, by the way, bikers for, bikers for Jesus and stuff like that. So that's why I'm not saying all are bad. But anyway, so I decided to be the motorcycle gang leader of the most notorious motorcycle gang out there. Again, 
can you picture that? Seriously? Okay. Anyway, um, well, it would take everyone, including me, by surprise if I did that. But it wouldn't, nothing takes God by surprise. God is not surprised by anything because God is outside of time. I want you to think about that. All these people that you knew that 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 seemed to be living for the Lord, that that, that proclaimed God, that sang Amazing Grace, that were at the church fellowships, that did all the right things, checked all the right boxes, and then all of a sudden they they walk away from church and walk away from their faith. That may have surprised you. It did not surprise God, because God stands outside of time. There's an interesting phrase found in First Peter, the book of First Peter, where it says that we are elect according to the foreknowledge of God. Think about that. God elects us to salvation based on his foreknowledge. So he's got complete and total knowledge. He knows the past, the present, and the future. And God knows when a person makes a profession of faith in 1981, he knows where that person's going to be in 2022. Think about that for a second. When, when you make a profession of faith, let's say you made your profession of faith in 1980 or 1990 or 2000, God knew everything about you then, and he knew exactly where you were going to be and everything about you 20 years later. Think about that. So when God makes his decision of salvation, he's making that decision with all of the information in mind. All of the information. He's got complete knowledge of your past, present, and future when you confess Jesus as your Savior. Therefore, God knows whether you're sincere or not. So you can fool other people, you can't fool God. Other people can fool you, but they can't fool God. God knows. He knows. He knows the heart of everybody. So God is never surprised by anything. God is never fooled by anybody. God knows the past, the present, and the future. God has complete and total knowledge of everything. He is sovereign over all and over all time. He's outside of time. He's everywhere present. So this, this, to even ask the question, can a person lose their salvation? When you really think about it, that question does not make any sense when you understand the nature of God. Because God is completely outside of all that. From God's perspective, it's not an issue of this person seemed to be living for God at one point, then stopped and walked away. Because God knows the past, present, and future. That's why Jesus could say when he was confronted by the crowds before Abraham was, I am. God, God knew everything. God knew everything about Jacob. We, we wonder, for example, uh, how could God pick Jacob and favor Jacob when Jacob, when Jacob was a conniving um, operative that he was and all that? Well, guess what? God not only knew Jacob's past and present, God knew Jacob's future. Think about that. When, 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 and I believe it was a Christophany, when the angel of the Lord, and I believe it was Jesus, appeared to Gideon and says, Hell, hello, mighty man of valor. Gideon's like, who are you talking to? You know, it's like Gideon had never done anything uh, that would be like valorous. But you know what? God knew his future. And God knows your future too. So this idea of losing salvation and all that, I think we get our minds, we get our minds twisted up in an in a intellectual pretzel on questions that just that just serve to distract us, okay? Here's what you need to know about salvation. Salvation is a gift of God. <laughs> God decides. God decides who's saved and who's not. God decides who gets to heaven and who doesn't. You don't, I don't. Our job is real simple. Our, it's not easy, but it's simple. Our job is to take the love of Christ to everyone. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16, 15, that's our job. When it comes to who accepts, who doesn't, who falls away, who's the blah, 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 blah. And, and Jesus does talk, tell a parable that from our standpoint, from our standpoint, as we're spreading seed, it's going to seem like some seeds don't go anywhere. Some seeds will spring up briefly and then they'll die out. And some seeds will, you know, he tells that, that, that parable, you know, um, but uh, that's from our perspective. We're going to see that. That's just the way it is. That's this fallen world that we live in. But as far as from God's perspective, He's not surprised by anything. He's got perfect knowledge. He knows your past, present, and future. He knows the same about every other human being on planet Earth. What you need to know, though, is that you don't need to live in fear. You don't need to live your life afraid that you're going to mess up and lose your salvation because you didn't earn your salvation in the first place. 
You got your salvation because of the grace of Almighty God, and God's grace will bring you all the way home. And uh, we are sealed until the day of redemption, as it says in Ephesians 4. And so just thank God for his grace and his mercy. Thank God for his salvation and rejoice that you are his and no one, including you, can pluck you out of the Father's hand.